Alright, what's happening everybody? It's your boy Keenan. Welcome to the Franchise Sports Talk College Football Blog. We are on week 9 of the college football season and once again I have a lot of key matches for you upcoming this week. Start with Thursday night's matchup between ACC foes Clemson, 18th ranked team in the nation against Wake Forest at Wake Forest. This is going to be a good matchup and I'm going to have to go with Clemson all the way in this one. They do have one loss in ACC play and they're not looking to have another loss trying to make it to an ACC championship. Next game I need to talk about a good um, Big East showdown between Cincinnati and number 16 Louisville. Cincinnati just recently got bumped off the ranking because of their loss last week to Toledo. A good Toledo team who only has one loss the season themselves. Now this is going to be a Big, East, a Big East championship implications on the line in this one between these two teams and this game is going to be at Louisville so the Cardinals do have the advantage but I'm going to have to give the edge to Cincinnati. I think they're going to pull the upset in this one. I want you to go is a good quarterback, and I think they have a good ground game, a little bit better than Louisville, respectively. They have a good running back in win, averages over six yards per carry, and with Munchie Lego leading the way on the offensive side with over 10 touchdown passes, he's a good quarterback overall, and he can even give you some good touchdown runs on his feet. And even though Chetty Bridgewater is a respected quarterback, he has matured so much this season, I have a hunch that Cincinnati is going to pull the upset in this matchup. Next game we need to talk about, I was going to be traveling to Northwestern. Both these two teams suffered their first Big Ten loss last week, and this game is going to be played at Northwestern. I think the Wildcats are very angry with their one-point upset loss last week to Nebraska, a good Nebraska team, and I think they're going to bounce back in this one. I'm going to go with the Wildcats over the Hawkeyes, but this is going to be a great Big Ten showdown. Next game we need to talk about going back to the ACC in-state rivalries against um, um North Carolina State at UNC North Carolina. This is going to be a great matchup. Both these teams have one loss in ACC play, but I'm going to look more towards um, NC State because they only have one loss, but they're still tied up with four teams for the Atlantic Division of the ACC um, title. And they even have the tiebreaker over higher-ranked FSU Florida because they upset them a couple of weeks ago. Now, I think in this matchup, I'm going to have to go with Giovanni Bernard and the Tar Heels. Now, they suffered their, week, their loss last week to Duke, and that was a great matchup, but they had a good comeback, and they pretty much lost it more for themselves in that matchup. They ended up coming back, coming towards the second half, and because of that bad Bad first half play, that was the difference maker in that matchup, and I think they realized that they're going to have to play all four quarters hard in this one, and I think they will. I'm going to go with the Tar Heels over the Wolfpack, but this is going to be a great ACC match. Headed over to the Pac-12, UCLA is going to be traveling at Arizona State. Arizona State has one loss in, in, in Pac-12 play. They're looking to stay alive. They're still tied up with USC, and they need this win. I think this, be, this game being played at Tempe, at Tempe Arizona good hostile environment. They still got the home field advantage and they're looking to redeem themselves with the humiliating loss last week to Oregon. So I'm going to have to go with the Sun Devils in this game. Next game we need to talk about SEC showdown between number 2 Florida and number 10 Georgia. One of the top games of the week. I'm going to have to go with Florida in this one because of that defense and especially with their performance last week against South Carolina who killed the Georgia Bulldogs in their matchup. And I really think this is going to be key that defense for Florida. They're going to keep them in the game and even with um, quarterback Jeff Jisco, he's doing do, doing well throwing the football. Okay, throwing the football, but he has been more effective running the football as a dual threat. And I still think that a lot of people are underestimating him with his groundwork, especially with, with a good running back behind him. And Mike Gillespie, he's a great running back and all SEC candidate. He's having a tremendous season. I'm going to have to go with the Florida Gators over this one. Now for Georgia, they're going to have to do well, better blocking for the line, offensive linemen, and better reading from the young talent running backs, um, both um, Todd Gurley and Keith Marshall. And their loss to South Carolina, when Ch Todd Bechet made a good exclamation point, he ended up showing a couple of clips, clips where both of the running backs, those star two running backs, were struggling reading their blocks in that matchup. And that could have been a big difference maker in the game. If they had read their blocks a little bit better, I think Georgia had a chance to stay within the game. But they ended up getting smanked. And they're playing against a tougher Florida defense who held South Carolina to 11 points when they won 44-11 to 11 last week. I got to go with Gator all the way, Gator Nation.
Next game, we need to talk about Big 12 matchup between number 14 Texas Tech at Little Manhattan, Kansas State. I'm going to have to go with the Wildcats in this one. I really believe in Colin um, Klein. He can make a good run for the Heisman Trophy and keep this team undefeated. And plus, with their performance last week, particularly on the defensive side against West Virginia, i got to go with the Wildcats over TC uh, or, or over TTU. This is a good throwing offense with um, Seth, Seth Duhi at the Red Raider quarterback. He's a good quarterback overall. They have a good spread offense. But I think that defense is smart enough and disciplined enough to stop that offense just enough to help Colin Klein pull off the win. I'm going to have to go with the Wildcats over the Red Raiders. Next game we need to talk about a big ACC matchup between Duke and number 12 Florida. Yes. Duke. They only have one loss in the Coastal Division, and they're looking to stay ahead of that division. But this game is played at Tallahassee, the home field advantage for the Nose. I have to go with the Seminoles all the way, even though they're going to have to play with outstar running back Chris Thompson. He's going to be out for the remainder of the season. Next game, you need to talk about a big game at Rutgers, the 15th ranked team in the nation, against Kent State. Kent State is 6-1 in this season, and they have a tremendous home run threat at running back in three uh, and. and and Dree Archer, he's averaging 10 yards per carry. So that obviously tells you, with eight touchdowns, so that obviously tells you that he's a big home run threat. And that just, that's going to be key for that defense. For the Rutgers, they're just going to have to keep containment in him. And I think that's pretty much all they, all they need to do in this matchup. I'm still going to go with Rutgers. They got the home field advantage, and they have a great defense led by star middle linebacker Kasim Green. Next thing we need to talk about going back to the Big Ten. Good matchup between Michigan State at number 25, Wisconsin. Star running back Monte Ball. He's starting to get the engine going this season. He started off the season for off pretty bad, but for the past three games, had a 200-yard game and two other 100-yard matches, and he's actually rushing fourth in the nation with 928 yards rushing and 13 rushing touchdowns already. We still have a lot more games left, and he can actually climb his way into becoming the leading rusher like he was last season. He's still a great running back and I'm definitely going to keep an eye on him for the 2013 NFL Draft. Staying in the Big Ten, my upset game of the week, Ohio State at Penn State. I'm going to go with Penn State in this matchup because that defense has been playing tremendously for the past couple of games. Matt McGloin has 14 touchdowns and two interceptions. He's doing, doing throwing the football pretty well, but one thing they do need to work on, they need to have that running game going with um, um, Zwenig. He's a good running back, just under 400 yards rushing in this season. He needs to step it up a little bit to help out Matt McGloin and balance up that offense. I think the defense is going to keep the in the game, even though Ohio State is very talented. They struggled for the past two weeks, though, against Indiana and Purdue. They ended up pulling off the overtime um, um, escape last week against Purdue. And two weeks ago, they won 59-56 to against Indiana, struggling for the, uh, against weaker opponents. And Penn State, they're trying to rebuild this, this team. We are Penn State. And if they stay undefeated in Big Ten play, whoever wins the Big Ten championship, everybody's going to know it should have been Penn State this season if they remain undefeated. But I'm going to go with them beating the Ohio State Buckeyes as my upset game of the week. Next game I need to talk about, saying in the Big Ten, number 22, Michigan is going to be traveling at Nebraska. Nebraska, this is going to be a key matchup. Michigan is still undefeated in Big Ten play, and I think they're going to pull off the win in this one. They struggled last week against Michigan State, but I think Denard Robinson is going to get the ball rolling again and, 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 and react better and have big, big momentum in this matchup. I'm going to have to go with the Wolverines pulling off the um, up, upset over Nebraska. Even though they're ranked higher, they're playing at Nebraska. That's going to be a tough, hostile environment, but I think Denard Robinson is going to get the job done. I'm going to go with the Wolverines in in this matchup. Headed over to the SEC, one, one of my last two matches I need to talk about for tonight. Number 11, Mich Mississippi State is going to be traveling at to Tuscaloosa to face number one, Crimson Tide. This is an easy choice for me. Roll tight, but this can be an upset alert. But I think Alabama's too much for Mich for Mississippi State. Mississippi State is undefeated, but they have not really played the, the big competition, tougher opponents. Now, uh, and their, their toughest opponent was Tennessee, and they won. 41 to 31 in their matchup, and Tennessee is 0 for 4 in SEC games. So that's really not too much of a tough opponent. But but at Tennessee, it still has a good offensive team overall. But that was pretty much their toughest opponent. So they really haven't played anybody well this season. And this is going to be a big test, especially for that defense for the Bulldogs. I think Alabama is too much for them. I have to go with the Crimson Tide over the Bulldogs in this matchup. Now. My game of the week, number five, Notre Dame is going to be traveling to Norman to face the number eight, Oklahoma Sooners. This is going to be a good 
great matchup to watch. I think that Notre Dame defense is going to keep them in the game. But on the offensive side, running back Theo Redding and Sierra Wood, well, they're going to have to keep that ground game going in order to develop develop the passing game and set up the pass. Both these two running backs are going to have to be a lot pretty effective in this matchup in order to win this game. Because for the past couple of games, OU's defense has been stepping it up a lot this season coming towards um, these past couple of weeks. And I think they're going to pull off the upset. I'm going to have to go with OU in this matchup. That defense has been stepping up. And offensively, throwing the football, Landry Jones has been looking like the Landry Jones that we all been expecting him to be. He's still a great quarterback. And if he has another great game, he can lead this team to a good upset. But this is going to be a key matchup because Notre Dame does have an outstanding defense. Number two scoring defense overall under 10 points per game led by Monte Teo. He's going to be all over the field. He's a Heisman Trophy candidate for interceptions. He's a great player overall. But I think that offense begins and getting that spark a little bit with Landry Jones and that defense stepping up, I think OU's going to pull off the close win. So I'm going to have to go with the Oklahoma Sooners over the Fighting Irish. But the Fighting Irish, they are still national championship contenders. Even when or lose, they're still great, a great team overall. But I have to go with OU because they're just too much on fire for the past couple of weeks. And we're still a little bit iffy on the Fighting Irish's offense. So I have to go with OU in this matchup. Now, Next time I'm going to catch you guys is on Monday. It's actually not on Monday. I have to give you a big announcement. I'm not going to see you next week because it's my birthday on Sunday. And I'm going to be taking a cruise to the Bahamas and Port Canaveral, Florida. You are not going to see me next week. But I will catch you guys tomorrow to give you my midseason college football awards. But after that, I'm not going to give you a recap of these, of these matches. The next time I'm going to catch you guys is two weeks from now where I'm going to give you a preview of week 10 of the college football season. Sorry I won't see you guys guys next week but I gotta go on vacation it's my 26th birthday and I deserve this I worked very hard and I gotta take this cruise I'm gonna have a great time but I'll let you guys know all about it when I see you guys on the next um, go round on week 10 of the college football season I see you guys then thank you for watching today's vlog from Franchise Sports Talk I'm your man Akeem McCall be easy